Welcome back to the Hot Pot Talk Show, guys, with your favorite hosts, Nunu. And DJ Dakiri. And we have today on our show, guys, introduce yourselves. My name is Michelle, and I'm from Mongolia. I've been in China for six years. So now I'm studying a master's degree of WTO. Mm -hmm. And like I worked before in Mongolian Student Association of Beijing and also of China for four years. So, okay. yeah, That's I'm here really responsible for all the students of Mongolia. That's a big responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jeff? Very cool. Um, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm from America. I've been in China. This is my fifth year. Uh, I work for a tech company here in Beijing. Um, and, yeah, I'm really excited to be on the show. Thank well, we're you. Excited we're excited to have you. So this episode, we are talking about WeChat, which is mm. one of the biggest social media we use in China and what greater guests to have to talk about it. So you yeah. want to give a brief description because it's a big social yes. media. So let me even read it. Read it out because it. So a WeChat is a Chinese social media app by Tencent. It's one of the world's biggest standalone social networking mobile app, uh, which have over 1 billion monthly users and 902 million daily users. That's so nice. it sounds massive already. Yeah, that's good. Yes. So just to give people like a general idea of like basically what WeChat is, what do you think first of all is the pros? Like why do people need this app in China? Why do we say it's our like lifeline? Mm -hmm. So give me like a pro. Um, I would say, you know, just the, the number of touch points uh, to our lives, right? Um, I think it's, it's uh, one of the few apps in the world that's a super app, right? Mm -hmm. um, in the sense that, like, for example, in the U.S., right, we have uh, Facebook, Instagram, and I Snapchat. guess PayPal, What's and Venmo, yeah, right? Like, these are three very, very separate things um, where I have to, on my phone or on the computer, like, I, I have to interact with them separately. But in WeChat, it's really all of those things bundled into one. And so I think the scope and scale of services that are available um, within a single application and how, you know, kind of, kind of streamlined and uh, singular that user experiences makes it um, indispensable here. You know? So you basically can do payments, you can talk to people, mm -hmm. you can post pictures all on exactly. one app. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One app. Just one yeah. platform. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like, since you're, as you say, you're basically uh, a yeah. leader of the whole Mongolian, <laughs> of Mong Mongolian people, so how does WeChat helps you to, like, actually get all these people? Manage these people. Yeah, manage these people. It's easy, like, WeChat makes my life very easier, you know, like, not only mine, like, for everyone. Okay. So that's why like when I'm starting to make some events, it's really, you know, like helpful with chat. You can just put advertisements for only for two minutes to every group. So like every, okay, um, in Beijing we have like 800 Mongolian students. In China we have 8,000 Mongolian students. Wow. So like 8,000 Mongolian students just can you know, take all the advertisements for two minutes. It's just for one first example. The second one is like when I started to do the, some donations in Mongolia, it's really hard to do. Like people have to go to bank, you know, they have to put some money and then the donation starts. Mm -hmm. But here, so you can just send money by WeChat by in two WeChat. minutes. That's why like, you can get like how much money for like just a few days. So it can help for that kid or for yes, the people, you know, yeah. to get survived. So it's basically reaching people instantly and yes, that's all good and well when you're just talking to people. But as you said, if you're sending money, you can instantly send money from the comfort of your yes. home, in your bedroom, in your lounge, send money right there and then. You don't have to go to any banks. That's brilliant. What else though? What about like meeting people or mingling? What are the pros of WeChat when it comes to that side of things? Um, I, yeah, I think again, uh, it, you know, just the fact that uh, in China everyone uses it, right? It's it's a singular app. Um, you know, recently when I was in the states on a business trip, I was just explaining to the ladies here that uh, I had met some new friends, and I really, you know, having been in China for four years, you know, mm. WeChat is is quite simple, right? You just ask someone, you scan a, a QR code, or you add a contact, and, and that really kind of takes care of it, and, and you can chat away and and really develop that friendship. Um, 
Whereas in the U.S., I, I kind of found myself a little lost. Um, do I add a phone number? Do I add a Facebook, <laughs> do Instagram, I, Snapchat? Like, what, what, what is do it? I, do I do school? all of them? Like, like, how do I become friends with you? you know? <laughs> um, and, and so it, it became this kind of joke. But, um, but yeah, th- I think that aspect of it, it just really um, takes all these great things we have um, that have come with the, the kind of mobile revolution that's happened in the five, last five, ten years five to 10 years, and uh, it, it all boils it down into the bare necessities of what we need, uh, makes it really, really simple, easy to use, and, um, and and again, everyone uses it, right? So that like that's the second yeah. element yeah. like that, that's really important. Yeah. But also, like, WeChat is quite private, you yes. know? Like, for example, if you are not friend, point. like, yes. with the person, yeah. you cannot see the moments yeah. or everything the person right. posts. What's moments, first right. of all? Uh, yeah, everybody. moments is basically, like, um, it's like an Instagram, you post the picture, right? Yeah. So you just um, scroll through the yeah, news scroll feed. through the news feed, yeah. like yeah. you can add location, mm-hmm. you can describe, you know, basically that's yeah. it. And you only the people you have on contact can see that. Yes. Right. It actually goes deeper than that. You can choose, by the way, which I learned <laughs> I would say a few months ago. You can choose who on your contact list. So we can all be friends. But for example, for some reason, I don't want Jeff to know yes. what I'm posting on my moment. Yeah. Yeah. I can so just can hide see. him and everybody else can see it. So you will never see it. So it goes even deeper. You can really control who sees You're what. You're in control yeah, of yeah. your yeah. own, like, um, yeah, news feed. Yeah. So that's a great point. But what about group chats? Because I think that's one very interesting aspect of how we all mm. operate in yeah. our communities, in our friendship groups, work, school, right. like generally what does, what is, what's the power of the group chat? Oh, I think, I think the fact that it's a singular, again, a singular platform that's mm-hmm. uh, available and also useful, not just for kind of personal um, interactions, but also work interactions, right? I think like yeah. all of us have work group yeah. chats. Yeah, yeah, yeah not every like. Right? Mm-hmm. Whereas in the states, like there's very very separate mm. uh, mediums of communication. Like work is email primarily only. email. I guess there's now Slack, right? Yeah. A lot of people use that, yeah. uh, but you would rarely hear about colleagues interacting with one another on Facebook, right? Or like WhatsApp that, that would just yeah. be really yeah. bizarre. It's like there's a clear separation of work. And, and uh, personal life. Whereas WeChat, um, because of, I think, the privacy things that you've, you've mentioned, it does create these kind of artificial walls that allow yes. you to have mm-hmm. more separation. That being said, with moments, you do want to be a little careful. Yeah. Lock you <laughs> your bosses. Lock yeah, yeah, <laughs> your workmates. Maybe your mother, too. Or something <laughs> right? mother, yeah, you have to. Um, but yeah, in general, um, it, I think, again, that it's something that uh, just, just the design and engineering of that app really makes it. Uh, very universally applicable and, and useful, right, for a variety of situations. Yeah. yeah, I have like so many group chats. It's like war group chats, yeah. then my hobby group chat, like volleyball, yeah. right? Like, exactly. so basically you just draw, oh, there is a meeting or oh, there is an event, and so like the people like just can see it in the group chat. Mm-hmm. And uh, group chats and WeChat, they can reach up to 500 people. Yeah. It's the yeah. max they yeah. can have, yeah. yeah. And after once they reach 100 people, the admin of the group chat must um, confirm, like if you add somebody else, mm-hmm. right. like so admin sees, so he can choose to mm-hmm. add this person or to not, mm-hmm. you know, so mm-hmm. it's actually very like under control, you know, yeah. and not just yeah. like mm-hmm. whoever just jumps in a group chat and there's like a mess yeah. going on, mm-hmm. yeah. So this basically is, for people that are not, you know, aware of what WeChat is, when you have group chats, you have an administrator, which you call an admin, right? The which person who created yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. The creator of the group, the caretaker of the group, and they have, yeah, a lot of control responsibilities, which is a pro to be fair. Especially you have mm. 500 people, <laughs> oh my God. But in terms of like your community work mm. and working your community, how does group chats, I'm sure plays a big role in that, but in, in details, like what are the things that maybe is not necessarily a pro, so basically a con of a group chat when it comes mm. to your work with the Mongolian community? Like, um, yes, I have a lot of people in my WeChat, you know, a lot of groups. But the brilliant thing is like the older groups never disturb me because mm-hmm. it's like you can just move the notification oh, or you can sure. just do like oh, you can mute notifications. Yes. That's really you know like good. So that's why I can just remember myself. Oh, for example, oh my WTO group, oh my student association group, oh that's Chinese, or oh, that's like you know governmental mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. So you can just 
post everything you want, but here's the thing, like people can post post the thing and mention you. That's why you can just, you know, they will force you to see that because okay, it's because really important. Right? Yeah, the so, edge. Yes, yes. Even if really. the group chat is on mute, when you at someone, you, you can you get the notification, yeah. right? Yeah. So you know you have to pay attention. That's so. why yeah, it's really, you know, like easy. So every important thing, I can all, always remember that, you know. That's why, like, I'm admin of a few groups, of course, mm -hmm. of Mongolian. So that's why, like, I always write the things on the notice and, like, People can see sometimes, but people can't see. But when I mention them, everyone knows that like tomorrow we have some um, meetings. Mm -hmm. or, uh, so oh, it's yeah. basically like, a good way to yeah. bring attention quickly to yes. a certain point you're making or a certain event. Yeah, really? admin of group chat, it just can add all. all yeah. So like all the right. people of the group chat, they get yeah. a notification. So it's like, so the people know it's something important. Like yeah. it's like, it's, yeah. True. But what are the cons though? Because we're spending a lot of like pros. What are the cons of WeChat groups or WeChat in general? Addiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, that's absolutely true. It's right? a drug. Yeah. It is. So, it so is. So like one thing you know that we were also talking about earlier before we came on air was um, the fact that you know this is the singular app. It's the one app in China that everybody uses, right? And so the amount of power and control mm. that oh, this, yes. single, this single app has over our lives is, is quite astounding, right? Mm. Um, you know, it, it's just something where, um, you know, how do we know, right, what's actually going on behind the scenes with the inner psychology of the app, what it's making us see, what it's making us not see, you know, these types of things. There's a lot of, um, I mean, recently, right, privacy concerns with Facebook, mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, just to have one app with so much power within, yeah. you know, within a country, it's... It's yeah. definitely, we're bordering on that kind of like, is it safe, is it, is it dangerous? As you said, we only know it's safe because a lot of times we haven't come up across yeah. anything mm. that has put anything right, into, right. thrown anything into light, like Facebook is going through right now because it does happen. Yeah. But in general, right. I feel like it's one of the <laughs> safest apps, especially with how much control it has. We link our bank cards. We have yeah. all our personal data on yes. there. Yes. And the passports, as photos, well, like they have, yeah, 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 passport yeah. photos, right. to everything. Yeah. So yeah. it is one of the like I think on the surface, it, it even forget going that deep into privacy. One of the cons I feel like is I'm out, my mobile data runs out, and I have no Wi-Fi, and I'm supposed to meet with my friend, yeah. and I realize I don't have my friend's number, I don't have yeah. Wi-Fi, so I can't connect to WeChat, mm. and now I'm f. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just, you're totally marooned, right? Like, you, there's nothing you can do. No. Um, there's been a couple of times, yeah, similar situation. I come back from overseas, my phone bill's overdue, so, like, I, I pay my phone bill with WeChat, so I can't <laughs> even pay my phone so bill to get me back on WeChat. And so it's this weird, bizarre, you know, cycle, cycle right, exactly. Right. You know? And so it's that... That level of dependency is a bit terrifying, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, Thank but, God for cafes and restaurants yeah, with Wi-Fi. Right. Like you just step into somewhere and connect. Wi -Fi, or right? Airport right? Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the thing, is the being dependent on this yeah. one app that holds all these different features. Like, One of the biggest pros for me is I don't have to leave my house to go to any bank to pay my bills. Yeah. I can top up my electricity. And my gas, yes, literally, that's true. That's true. from the comfort phone of my home, bill. phone you can bill, buy everything. train tickets, plane yeah. tickets, yeah. tickets, hotels, hotel, everything, anything. even Easy. show, food, like everything, because like, they are copyright with different like yeah. other apps. It like, basically like, hosts other yeah, apps. Yeah, hosts so. other apps. So. Food delivery, yes. online shopping, yeah. um, buying tickets, flights, hotels, and stuff like yeah. that. Yes, yeah. like four years ago. Like uh, when I studied in my bachelor degree, like it was you know, hard to make some events for me because I have to go somewhere, you know, I have to meet oh. him, meet him, I have to buy, I have to go to bank. Because that time, yes, of course was WeChat, but not was like, you know, like that important right now. Yeah. But now I can just sit in my room, you know, in my dormitory and I can just work, you know, like and for many days. Yeah. I don't have to go out and people are like asking, what did you do? I said, that one, that event, everything I paid, everything is done, everything yeah. is successful. Yeah. Why? Because WeChat helps you know, to do everything. Send the files, yeah. send the money. No. Because WeChat is yes. life. <laughs> life is life. Okay, well, I want to oh, quickly okay. delve into something, right? A little bit more lighthearted of WeChat. 
we have the hot pot challenge and just like previous episodes so i'm gonna quickly explain it to you guys the show is called hot pot for a reason right we have a hot pot challenge and it's basically scenarios in there that's connected to wechat of yeah, course yeah. and i just want you guys to pick one out you read it and then answer the question sure. or the scenario yeah oh. so michelle you start yeah go okay read this scenario Have you ever made a real friend via group chats? Are you friends now? Oh, have you mm. ever made any... Like basically you met somebody through yes. WeChat yes. and then you made really? friends. Yeah, really? Yes, like. of course. When I was like organizing a lot of events, I'm like posting all my events to the group chats. That's why many people and can people see it. That's well. why they're starting to add me if they're like interesting on my event, right? That's why like, we're starting to catch up and like I like her, she likes me and then we're like, starting to do some events together. Just one example, that's why like, yeah, I got okay, a lot so of friends okay. by WeChat. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right, Jeff, pick one. Pick from the hot pot. Oh, I hope yes. it's hot. Let's hope go. it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's just something steamy. Um, have you ever gone on a blind date with someone you've oh. met? Oh, steamy one. Oh. Ooh, I have to think. Okay. There's a lot of dates in China lately. Oh. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I actually don't think I have. Um, I've been set up before on WeChat. Um, that happens quite regularly. Um, <laughs> actually, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, <laughs> okay. This is actually Spill the tea. this is a really funny story. Build the team. Um, I was I was playing volleyball and uh, in 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 Beijing, the men's volleyball community tends to be uh, split between two groups of people. One is like, you know. Play, like player a lot of foreign players right who um, used to play professionally overseas mm -hmm. um, they, they play there's a local community um, that's predominantly gay men mm -hmm. um, and so okay. I, I was playing pickup uh, once and I think um, a gentleman asked my friend for my WeChat oh, okay. um, hoping you know to, to ask oh. me out or something like that. <laughs> And so, out of nowhere, I get this WeChat ad, and then this 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 gentleman, um, you know, proposition to you. Yeah, <laughs> very very explicitly. Yeah. Really? Yeah. To which I pull out the response, like, "Hey, man, like, I'm, you know, I pre, you know, I, I'm, I'm, oh, sorry. I'm flattered. I'm, I'm flattered, but you know, I, I don't, I don't see it that way. Um, let maybe let me help you find someone. Who's hey, a bit so more you even connect to him? Yeah, like, yeah, you know. So I, I want to be like courteous about it, right? So. That that's probably the the one instance mm. that I, I remember. That's a good um, enough yeah, instance. Yeah, quite, quite, quite juicy. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, yeah. we're gonna have to do a part two to this because there is so much we can talk about when it comes to WeChat. We should, yeah. But right. we've run out of time, so guys, tune in next time. It's your host Nunu and DJ Dakiri. I know, yes. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Michelle Thank and Thank you Jeff. for Thank invitation. You so yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time, guys.